this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at the LG Nitro HD on AT&T. It's going to be available December 4th for $249 with contract, and it's AT&T's third LTE 4G phone. That's true 4G. The LG Nitro has an IPS 720p display. That's pretty exciting. In fact, I just got myself a Samsung Galaxy S2 Skyrocket. There's a long name for you. And this is a pretty nice LTE phone on AT&T as well, but it's 800 by 480 pixels, and 720p is really nice combined with IPS. Take a look at it, and we'll compare them. They don't have the same desktops running, but you can see size comparison-wise. They're both 4.5-inch phones running Android OS 2.3.5 Gingerbread, so they're both big phones as well. Black slabs, typical-looking Android phones. And they're... Both pretty slim. Of course, Samsung always manages to be a little bit slimmer than everybody else, but this is a pretty, pretty close race in this case. And on the back, you've got the Samsung has a plastic back, but they kind of try to make it look like metal. And this one has one of the weirdest backs I've ever seen on a phone. This is like a little bit of a dizzying herringbone pattern we've got in the back. It's molded plastic, so that's actually a texture on the phone. You can see we have the 8 megapixel camera back and it shoots 1080p video. Really good camera by the way. Very nice colorful sharp shots. Speakers down here and up here, uh, not the world's most convenient place for it, but this is your micro USB port under a little door. Keeps the look clean. Microphones up top here. There's another one at the bottom for noise canceling. It's becoming pretty standard now on phones. Power buttons here. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Nothing on that side. Nothing on the bottom except for a microphone and the pull point where you want to pull the back off to remove it. And here we have the volume rockers. It's a very light phone. They're, they're kind of uh, doing a Samsung here and making a fairly large but incredibly light phone so you won't feel this much in your pocket other than the size. Since it is a 4.5 inch display we're not talking petite phone here. Obviously it's going to be bigger than the iPhone with this 3.5 inch display. The phone has capacitive Android buttons down here. It only has three, and it doesn't have that nice Samsung feature that I really like where you can set the backlight timeout to be up to six seconds so these don't keep disappearing on you because you really cannot see them, obviously, when, when the backlighting is off on the buttons. If you touch in this area and you touch a button, then you can light them up. Once you get used to where they are, it becomes easier to operate. But This one is interesting, by the way. They've combined search with the menu button. That's why there are only three buttons. You have the search option over here, and then you have your basic settings options over here. So, so the phone runs Android OS 2.3.5 Gingerbread. And it's got LG's UI customizations on it, which include this little launcher bar here. And this is customizable, so you don't want messaging here. You can just drag it over here and remove it. And if you want to add something in, you, you can't grab one of these guys from the desktop, strangely enough, but you can grab something here. Say I want calculator. And I just pop it right there. They've also customized the application draw, and we saw this on the LG G2X on T-Mobile as well. You've got all of your applications listed here, and then there's a separator, and we've got downloads. And you can create more categories if you like, and you can hide those, reveal those, like so, and you can pinch to zoom and hide things too, which is kind of interesting. It's not a bad customization. Uh, I'm not super duper fond of having little backgrounds added behind my icons in Android. I think they're nice enough as they are, but that's a minor complaint. And you've got your usual mini screen desktop here. You can see that we've got seven total available desktops. Scroll through, and you can put your widgets and your shortcuts there, and you've got the Yahoo Weather widget provided by LG there. There's social networking widget. It's a pretty good social networking widget for Facebook and Twitter here. And you can set the refresh interval. I just have it do it manually if you're really worried about your battery life. And you can pinch in on your desktop. That does something like what HTC Sense does when you press and hold on the home button there. Instead you've got the pinch, pinch zoom to do this. The phone runs on a 1.5 gigahertz dual core third generation Snapdragon CPU, so that's quite competitive with the Galaxy S2 running on the same CPU, and then the HTC Vivid as well, which got the same CPU but clocked a little bit slower at 1.4 gigahertz. It has a gig of RAM and it has 4 gigs of internal storage, not as much as its competitors, and there's about 1.86 gigs available for use, but AT&T does include a 16 gig micro SD card, something you don't get with the other two LTE phones. 
and that card is underneath the back door so we'll turn it over and give it a big old yank whole plastic cover comes off and here's the 1700 70 milliamp battery which puts it right between the Vivid and the Skyrocket in terms of capacity there's your SIM card slot and there's the included micro SD card there's your speaker down here with a pretty sturdy metal grill over it and exposed sides kind of reminds us of some of HTC's unibody designs where you've got pretty much everything naked here once you take the back cover off since the back cover wraps around in terms of performance you can see our Quadrant benchmark right here we ran the test a few times and this is one of the few phones that actually doesn't get a little faster benchmark every time you run the application and we're hovering near 2500 that's not a bad result at all but it falls behind the Samsung Galaxy S2 Skyrocket which was scoring a bit around 3300 on average for us still that's a pretty fast phone even if it isn't benchmarking as the fastest kid on the block experientially it feels fast enough you can move around the device pretty quickly LG's UI does slow things down a little bit it's not so much that it's making the phone slow as they have some inertia sc scrolling control here to control it so it doesn't go you know really fast when you scroll in terms of software in here you know you're going to get some AT&T applications or bloatware depending on your opinion and a good smattering of other applications we've got an alarm clock here we've got an application manager which is really like a file manager AT&T Navigator is on board along with Google Maps and Navigation for those of you who prefer AT&T's $10 a month service. Of course they got their family map on here as well. Google Books is preloaded, Amazon Kindle's on here, we've got a calculator, calendar, Adobe Flash is preloaded on the device. You don't have to go and download it from the market, though you may need to download an update depending on when you get this phone. Got a link to get some game loft games on here my AT&T account management. Polaris Office is on board and this is a full office suite. And This is the starting interface. This part's not too exciting but you see you can create a new document, Excel compatible spreadsheet, PowerPoint slideshow. We'll just do the document thing. And you get your pop-up keyboard right here and some formatting controls for inserting graphics, changing your fonts, that kind of stuff. So you've got Office in your pocket here. A Wi-Fi sharing app that's for mobile hotspot feature with this phone supports and that's a very good thing to have on LTE 4G phone because this thing gets blazing fast speeds. Got a voice recorder on board, some social networking, Twitter's preloaded, quick light for video chat, though you might want to try Skype or Google Talk video chat as well. Zigna Poker is here. Standard Google stuff like Google Talk, YouTube Player, all that. Speaking of those LTE speeds, you can see our results here as usual rocking pretty excellent in the Dallas area we are averaging around 20 megs down and between 8 and 9.9 .9 megabit per second up that one slower speed you see here is when we force the phone onto HSPA Plus which is the slower version of 4G on AT&T's network for those of you who are not in an LTE coverage area that's still very very nice and fast we got 5.3 megabit down and a little over 1.1 up Call quality on the phone is good. It, call recipients particularly love the way we sound it. It sounded very rich, very full, and background noise was very minimal, which means the DSP is working pretty well to do noise reduction. Incoming voice quality was good, but I found the earpiece volume a little bit low. And this is the standard dialer here on the phone. Giant numbers, your usual kind of thing, and you've got Quickies, quick links to your call log contacts and groups. There is no favorites link, which is kind of a bummer. So for video and streaming, you've got AT&T's live TV service powered by Mobi TV. That gives you mostly TV shows that you can get on demand or st stream in a, a sort of live fashion that costs $10 a month. We would show you that, but the service is not yet ready because the phone isn't quite out yet. Of course, you get the YouTube player. You've got Adobe Flash and whatever that brings you in terms of website stuff. We've got M-Spot videos which is something that AT&T has been bundling lately for download and rental of movies at a eh, not so impressive price and you can play anything that you've got locally stored which we're going to take a look at right now we're going to look at 1080p high profile movie trailer nice way to show off the 1280 by 720 pixel display you can hear the speaker on it, it's not bad, it's not gonna, you know 
super First, impress anybody, but it's not bad. Very sharp. Nice colors, too. IPS display. Good viewing angles. Nice for watching video. Now, for something even better, we're going to test this with the MHL out to an HDTV. This micro USB port is a combo. MHL adapter. That means if you get a $20 adapter that you can find at most carrier stores, plug that in, plug in your, your uh, cell phone charger into this. You can plug this right into your HDMI TV. Now we've got the LG Nitro HD hooked up to our HD TV via this final dongle here. This is an MHL adapter. You plug the HDMI cable into it. You plug your cell phone charger into the adapter as well and you're good to go. And it mirrors whatever is on the phone's display on the TV. So we're going to go back to that 1080p high profile video and watch it where it belongs on the big screen. Good audio video sync as well. So, what's the play? It's pretty amazing the phone is doing this. Another way to test how good the display actually is to, is to read ebooks. So we'll take a look at Google Books, which is included here, and you can see how sharp the fonts look. And even at relatively small size, you can see how good that looks. Really nice and clear, and you can see the, the serifs on the font. Very easy on the eyes, very pleasing. And the, the screen has a fairly neutral color cast, slightly, ever so slightly, maybe moving towards the purple magenta like Super LCDs tend to, and also this LG IPS display, but generally speaking it's fairly color neutral, and a lot more color neutral than the Samsung Galaxy S2 Skyrocket with its Super AMOLED Plus display, which has awesome super rich colors, but does tend to have a blue color cast that's particularly noticeable when you're reading books on a white background or viewing web pages with a white background. Speaking of web pages, this has your usual Google Android WebKit web browser, again with Adobe Flash. And we'll check that out. And you can see the keyboard here. We'll visit our own website. And you've got haptic feedback on the keyboard. I've got our website loaded. You can see the little custom strip that LG has created here for the web browser with pretty much the same options that you've got new window, open up your settings, that kind of stuff, and going back and forward. But everything is really nice and sharp and easy to read, even when the fonts are small and the colors are quite rich. S smooth pinch zooming there. Smooth scrolling. And how about Adobe Flash performance? We'll check that next. Our video review of the HTC Titan, the Titanic phone on AT&T running Windows Phone 7.5. And we'll pop that out to full screen. And you can see the difference in size, but it's actually not that huge considering you're getting half an inch of so display. That's, that's because there's it's so little It's performing best. perfectly. And we're doing this over AT&T's LTE 4G network, so um, which is faster than a lot of folks' home broadband connections. So there's no problem there with getting good streaming 480 quality. The flash player controls, they're decent. They're a little bit fussy, just as they often are on Android, but it's usable. As I mentioned, this has a really good 8 megapixel camera. No disappointments here. We're using our Samsung Skyrocket as a subject here, and you can see it's got pretty quick focus. Tap where you want to focus. Shoots pretty quickly. A little delay with the save there, but not bad. And you've got controls here for switching between the front and rear camera, your exposure, flash control and a variety of other things like ISO, white balance, color effect, timer, shutter sound, and all that stuff.
And we'll switch over to video mode and shoot in full 1080p. And now recording our beautiful phone. Checking the focus. Recording our beautiful phone. And there's the playback. My not very steady handheld camera work, but it's good. That's the LG Nitro HD available December 4th on AT&T for $250 with contract. It's their third LTE Android phone. 4.5 inch display, IPS 720p display at that. Definitely a nice phone. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.